that is exhausting. It is not my main focus. So you're disgusting. That's what keeps me from being my most best self. Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome. Today's video is going to be 10 ways in which I am putting my mental health first. And that is aiding in weight loss. Now on this channel, I am on a weight loss journey. However, like this video is going to explain, I am putting my mental health first. And the reason why my channel is still named Taking Weight Off is because I'm really working hard to take the emotional weight off of me that has been on me for so many, so many years. And I have just come to this conclusion and I've been saying it for years, but it's really one of those things I sat down and was like, you are not going to be able to lose weight until you get your mind right. So that's what this video is all about. And it's also going to include some non-scale victories as well. So I hope that you guys enjoy. If you do, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And then if you guys are new here and that sounds interesting to you to follow a mental health journey that is also going to be not really focused on weight loss, but you're going to see me lose weight as I really truly do the work inside. It's like an internal healing journey. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely make sure you're subscribed and click the notification bell for every single, so you're notified of every single upload. Now let's get into this video. Okay, so 10 ways in which I am putting my mental health first that is aiding me in weight loss is, you guys already know if you've been watching my previous videos this past couple of weeks, but it is putting up the scale. The scale is something that is so toxic for me. I have a video that I did that I will link down below where it talks about the toxic behavior that I realize and recognize and I would not have recognized until I got rid of that scale. So if you want to see that video, it's linked down below. But the scale has just been something I have been saying for years, but I just did not know how to get it out of my life. And I just, I kind of, you know, you, you hit rock bottom at one point and you're just like, I can't keep doing this the way that I've done it. And even though you might look at ways in the past where you may be successful, you look, oh, well, why can't I do it that way? Why can't I do it that way? You are constantly having to try and change things up because obviously if you lost the weight but then gained it back, there's still something you need to, that you didn't do, that you didn't do right. And that you're, the work is still, the work still has to be done. So that was something, that I've been saying again for years, I'm like, oh, I can handle it, I can handle it. Cause I'll get to a point where I'm like, I can handle this. And every single time without fail, I see the number, it goes up, it doesn't say what I want it to say. And it's an excuse or a reason for me to binge and eat crappy because, well, the scale says I gained two pounds. So let's go ahead and really gain two pounds. And it's just not the right mentality to have at all. Number two is I have written down foods that I know I absolutely cannot control myself around and for the time being I have taken those foods out of my life. Any food that I know I can't control myself around, any food that I know makes me feel bad, any food that I know if I eat I'm going to want more or if it's going to trigger more cravings it is out of my life and I do not eat it. So that is something that's really important too because this is something else I've been saying to myself many times is I know when I eat this, it leads me to want to eat this and so I need to somehow do this but then I was so just into not having to get rid of foods that I just kept trying to trying to work it in or trying to make ways around me knowing that this particular food I cannot have in my house because if I do I'm going to eat it or if I eat this it's going to trigger more cravings for other things so just being completely honest with myself writing down trigger foods and staying away from them is another way that's really been helping me number three is really huge too and that is not nitpicking at my body every single second of the day or even period like not doing it at all i am notorious for nitpicking at my body looking at it and going you're x y and z pounds so you're disgusting Ew, why did you do this? Ugh, 
can't even look at your I can't even look at you right now. My body does amazing, wonderful things for me every single day. I don't have to think about breathing, I just do it. I don't have to think about my heart pumping, it just does it. My body does all of these amazing things. I've had two children, like I've grown two children in this body of mine. Why am I looking at myself going, this body is beautiful and is it where I want it to be right now? As far as looks, no, but guess what? Or even really mobility wise, but if I learn to love it now, if I don't learn to love it now, when I lose a hundred pounds, I'm still gonna nitpick and I'm still gonna find something wrong with my body. So that's something that's huge and no, I have not conquered this. I have not conquered a lot of these things. I'm just saying these are things that are really, really helping me to stay focused on the mental health aspect of this weight loss journey versus just losing weight, losing weight, losing weight, losing weight. What are we gonna do to lose weight? What are we gonna do to lose weight? And that is something that's very, very, very important is not looking at myself going, you're so gross, you're so nasty. And then there's nitpicking and finding everything I don't like about my body. Number four, instead of the scale, I am now focusing on how things fit and how I am feeling versus how much the scale says I weigh or I have lost. There are so many aspects that go into that scale as to why you may be up or down or why you're not losing that it's just, it's so stressful to try to figure out. And for me, I just am trying to, instead of even thinking about how much weight do I think I've lost? It's like, how are your clothes fitting? These jeans I'm wearing in particular, I sat in the Lane Bryant dressing room when I purchased them and I was, devastated. I was in tears because I tried them on and they fit really great in my legs, but they were tight in my stomach, but they were size 24. And I was like, I will be damned if I'm going up to a size 26. And I sat in that dressing room and I was in tears. And now these jeans fit amazing. I'm so glad I went ahead and I got them because I was like, I'm going to get them and I'm going to get into them. So yeah, my jeans are fitting better and that just makes me so happy. That just feels so amazing, doesn't it? It feels so great. Number five, I've been focusing on how amazing I feel. Now, I, I'm not going to lie. The first week that I took all of these foods and all of these triggers and all of these things I know have been stalling me from my weight loss and I was irritable and tired and oh my gosh my anxiety was through the roof oh my gosh it was awful i thought i was gonna die like not that drastic but it was bad it was hard and i was like i don't know if i'm gonna be able to make this but now that the first week has passed and gone by i feel energized i feel energetic my anxiety and depression has drastically decreased as a matter of fact i was driving today and i was just like Y'all don't know, I have like an intense fear of driving and it's not like getting into an accident. I mean, although that's part of it, it's mostly just having a panic attack while I'm driving and it's just like being stuck and trapped. I'm like, what? I, I need to run. I need to move and I have a panic attack. And so um, I wasn't thinking about it today and it felt amazing. But guess what? The second I started thinking about like, hmm, I feel really good. Where's that panic at? Why am I not anxious? I started tensing up and then I just started feeling like, you know, I was like holding my breath and I'm like, mm, there it is. <laughs> but yeah, overall my anxiety has drastically decreased, which feels amazing. Number six is realizing that eating healthy is not a punishment, nor is it a prison sentence. Now I'm not gonna lie. Yes, sometimes when I'm eating my salad or my grilled chicken or Whatever it is I'm eating, I'm like, ugh, I wish I could eat this. Y'all, this past Halloween was the very first Halloween that I did not sit there and binge out on candy because I have adopted this philosophy. Did I feel like I was missing out? Hell yeah. Did I want to sit there and eat a ton of Twix and, and Kit Kats and get into my kids' candy and eat a ton of it? Yes. Did I want to do what I normally do, which is go get fast food or pizza because I'm like, oh, like it's Halloween. I don't need to cook. Yes, but I didn't do any of that. And it's the first Halloween where I took my kids trick or treating, where I didn't feel horrible, where I didn't feel weighed down, where I wasn't like, 
you know, anxious and like, I don't, this is the last thing I want to do. Not just not into the whole experience because I was so weighed down with food that it was, I was, I was just, I felt like crap. And this, this past Halloween was the first Halloween that I can remember where I stuck to my eating plan. I stuck to what I said I was going to do and I didn't binge out on candy. I didn't eat a single piece of candy and I felt great. So I just had to adopt this mentality that eating healthy is not a prison sentence. It is not a punishment. It is making you feel so much better. It's clearing your mind. Certain foods change the chemistry in my brain and make it harder for me to want to get out of bed, make it harder for me to be able to control my anxiety, make it harder for me to want to like get work done day to day. I have felt so incredibly energized and amazing since taking these foods. And these foods, because I, I feel like I'm gonna get that question asked, well, what foods are you not eating? It doesn't matter what foods I'm not eating because it, what I can't or what I'm choosing not to eat is not gonna look the same for everyone. That's something that you need to do, the work that you need to do with yourself and the honesty that you need to do with yourself is like, what kind of foods can I truly handle and which ones can I truly not? And then do some experimenting. And if you bring something in or if you eat something and then you find yourself having all these cravings or uncontrollably wanting to eat more or eat that more, then you know, okay, this is a trigger food, I need to let it go. And I'm not even saying that you need to do that. I'm just saying these are, th this is what's working for me. I am now at this point of this video, 14 days, binge free, feeling amazing. And I know you might be thinking, girl, it's only been two weeks. You acting like you've got the end all be all. And I don't, I really don't. But what I do know from what I've heard and what I know in my gut and in my brain and my intuition that's been telling me for like, 15, 20 years, you have to do the mental work. You have to do the work in order to get the weight off. And it all starts here. And then when you start implementing these other things like with food or triggers and realizing that and then taking those things out of your life, you're going to conquer this. And I know that I am. So whether it's two weeks or 255 days, I feel like as I keep going, this this is the answer for me personally. So yeah, I mean, I may not be happy in the moment while I'm sitting here eating like veggies or salad, but I do know that once I look at the full picture of the fact that I am not weighed down and boggled down and my brain chemistry is all messed up and I'm anxious and depressed and I can't get out of bed, it's so incredibly worth it. And honestly, when you think about eating food, you're literally eating it for those seconds and it's pleasurable and it's like instant gratification, but then what happens? What are the after effects of me eating this particular food if I know that this food in particular is going to make me feel this way because I'm not gonna be able to control myself and I'm gonna eat so much of it, then then I'm gonna feel like this. Is that worth it? Absolutely not. Number seven, I'm gonna read this word for word. Eating junk changes my brain chemistry. If I eat a ton of junk food, <sighs> Oh my God, like I'm literally not even exaggerating. I become a different person, almost like I'm bipolar. Like I've questioned before, am I bipolar? And then I'll go and I'll read up about it and I'm like, no, that's not me, but why do I feel bipolar when I, because I have such crazy low lows and then high highs because when I'm eating good and I'm doing the healthy things, I feel great. But then the minute I start eating crappy, it's just like, whew, and it's fast too. So eating junk changes my brain chemistry. I feel horrible about myself. My body feels heavy and it makes it harder to do things other than lay in bed. I shame myself, I guilt myself, I abuse myself and talk down to myself. And doing all of that, leads me feeling like I've hit rock bottom. So I feel like, honestly, I feel like I've hit rock bottom like a hundred times. I'm not even kidding when I say that. I get so low and I also am not the mom, dog mom, or woman I want to be for me or for those people in my life that I love. I, I don't even like to say this, but truly when, when I've eaten so much, 
I just, I stopped caring. I stopped caring about everything and anything. And I started to hate myself. I start to isolate. I stay inside. I have no interest in building friendships. So yeah, I do nothing but eat, cry. I work a little because you guys know I'm, I mean, I, I try to be pretty consistent with my uploads on both of my channels. Um, but pretty much if I'm not doing that and I'm not uploading or filming, I'm editing, laying down in my bed. I am laying down all day. I'm eating. I'm crying. I just waste away my days. And for what? Number eight. I kind of went into this too, but I have taken, taken a deep dive inventory into what foods trigger me. And I have taken those foods out of my diet. I no longer eat them. And I don't tell myself you can no longer have X, Y, and Z forever. I just tell myself for today, I want to challenge you to not eat X, Y, and Z. And let's just make it through these first 24 hours. And let's just see what we can do. And then the next day I wake up and I'm like, okay, let's make it through these 24 hours without eating X, Y, and Z. So if you think about it, for me, if I think about I can never have this food again, it's really overwhelming and it's really just like, I can't do this, I can't do this. Even though everything I've just told you lets you know and lets me know that I feel best when I don't eat those foods, I will still try to bargain with myself and with other people to try to fit those foods in my life. Why do I do that? Number nine, I am not obsessively thinking about weight loss 24 seven. <sighs> that is exhausting to sit here and think if I have this extra bit of this, or if I eat after this time, or if I don't drink th this amount of water, I'm not gonna lose weight this week, and I'm not gonna this, and I'm not gonna this, and oh my gosh, I need to... <sighs> It's all I used to think about, and I used to obsessively think about it. It has been so freeing to not obsess about weight loss. I'm telling you guys, you put your mental health first and do the things that you need to do to keep your mental health in top, tip top shape. And if you want to lose weight, the weight loss is going to be an amazing side effect. It is not my main focus. It is not. For the first time, and I can't tell you how many years, I have not been exercising. And the reason why I'm not exercising is because I want to focus on getting my food under control first and my hunger under control and really be in tune with myself and my hunger cues and am I eating because I'm bored or, you know, because sometimes you can like feel like you're hungry, but you're really just bored or you really just need to drink something. And that's what I'm doing. I'm making sure that I'm staying cued into my body and what it's asking for. And to not be obsessively thinking about how much I weigh, how ugly I am, how much I just wanna lose this weight. I'm a size 22 and oh my gosh, I just can't wait. I cannot wait until I lose all this weight. Imagine how much different my life is gonna be. Imagine how much better my life is gonna be. And it's like, Jill, your life is not gonna be that much better. Because what's holding me back now is the fact that I obsessively think about the scale food, and weight loss. That's what keeps me from being my most best self. It truly is. When I eat the crappy foods, my brain chemistry changes and I start to isolate and I don't wanna go do things. I don't wanna be around people. I just wanna be left alone. And it makes me internalize everything and it makes me just focus on self. It is not healthy for me whatsoever. So to not obsessively just be thinking about weight loss all the time, it's just been so freeing and I feel like I can breathe again. Number 10, I have not put myself on any kind of timeline. I used to, again, obsess over the number. So I weigh 224 today and if I lose two pounds every single week, by this day in this year, I will have hit this weight and oh my gosh, I cannot wait until I get, but then like you think about it and it's like, well, damn, that's like two years from now. And then like, am I really going to lose two pounds every single week? Okay. What do I need to do to make sure that I lose two pounds every single week? It's just, 
it's too much. I'm choosing, again, I'm choosing not to obsess over foods that, what foods I can't eat or I'm choosing not to eat. I don't feel abnormal. I am abnormal. I am not a normal eater. And that's why it makes me so angry and I, I get so triggered by comments where people are like, you're just making excuses. You just use your binge eating disorder. You probably don't even have it. Like y'all, I'm telling you, I cannot control myself over food. I obsess over it. And I am not the normal overeater. Some of you that are watching may just have overeaten yourself to the, to the size that you are right now. That is not me. That is not me. I am not normal when it comes to food. And for me to accept that, and trust me, it's still a work in progress because I fought tooth and nail. Like I want to be able to at least let me substitute some kind of candy for Halloween. Why? Why do I feel the need to eat candy? Because any other day you can best believe I've had dark chocolate in my fridge for like over a week now. I have not touched it. It is completely unopened but I was gonna have it on Halloween. Why? I haven't touched it. Why on that day do I have to have that candy? Because that's what everyone else is doing. Everyone else today is binging out on candy. That's a great excuse for me to binge out on candy too. No, Jill, you're not like everybody else. And that's something that's been really hard to come to terms with is that yes, I'm, I'm very abnormal. Just like an alcoholic cannot handle alcohol, I cannot handle, I cannot overeat. I can never overeat. So like on Thanksgiving, I mean, obviously if it happens, it happens. But I'm going in with the mindset that I really need to try my best to not overeat. I don't get the excuses. I don't get the, the free for all eat days like, like other people do. Because other people can have that day, overeat, and then move on the next day and probably not even eat that much the next day. Me on the other hand, I will overeat on Thanksgiving. I will overeat all the way up until New Year's Day. Not even kidding. You guys have seen it that have been on this channel with me for years. You have seen it over, over, and time and time again. I am not a normal eater and I have to come to terms and be okay with that. And it's hard, it really is. But again, I choose to not focus on that. I choose to focus on one day at a time. Just take this one day at a time, Jill. That's all you have, these 24 hours in front of you. Do the best you can and eat the best you can and make the healthiest choices that you can. I have said this too, like I don't wanna deprive myself. You hear this a lot in diets, like I don't wanna deprive myself. I have, myself have said this a lot. But guess what? I had to come to the terms, Jill, you cannot have these certain foods because again, you are abnormal. You are not like everyone else when it comes to food. I just may not be able to ever eat my trigger foods again. And you know what? That's depressing to think about. It's so depressing to think about. As a matter of fact, it's so depressing to think about when I first thought about it. I was just like, you know what? I would rather stay fat my, the rest of my life, fat and unhealthy and die early than just sit there and take those foods away. But why? Because I still crave them, because I still want them, because they're so important to me. They're, those foods aren't important to me. There's some kind of connection that I feel with eating that I need to work through. So again, I'm not like everyone else, but I, I try not to focus about, I try not to focus on that. And not focusing on a timeline or not focusing on how much, how much more I have left to go or not focusing on what I can or can't eat, how much longer, like, am I ever gonna be normal again when it comes to my anxiety? Because again, we're not just talking about weight loss here or taking away foods. We're also, we're also trying to manage and get rid of this anxiety, these intense panic attacks that I have that not only have completely changed my life for the worse at the age of 24 and here I am 14, 15 years later still dealing with the same crap because I'm not, I'm not dealing what is internally creating these panic attacks. 
yes, it's the fear of having a panic attack that makes me, but it's deeper than that. It really, truly, truly is. So I don't know. This just all ties in together. That's why, again, it's so important. Like I am on a mental health journey, not a weight loss journey. I'm going to end with this. All of these in combination daily and not just me picking and choosing is what is helping me to be successful and setting myself up for success for the up coming holidays so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i know it was long and lengthy but i again hope you enjoyed if you did definitely give this video a thumbs up i love you guys i hope that you're having an amazing day and i will see you in the next one bye